there's a ruling in their favor. She can get access to her funds that have been seized for the last two months. One major issue that been topical had to do with uh, the claim that she had operated undeclared real estate business using various aliases. The OSB had also made the claim that she had sold a property using the alias of Nanaya Ode. Now, the minister, to her lawyers in a document filed, make the point that one, she does not operate any real estate business. Number two, she says that in terms of the property that she sold, she sold it on behalf of her mother, who is called Nanaya Ode, alias Nanaya Ode Nyako, uh, who is now deceased. And so they claim that she engaged in the transaction using an alias is false. Again, on receiving money from a dead brother's account, you recall the OSB had said that even after the brother's death, monies were transferred from the brother's account into her account. Now she says that that account was created with funds from her dead brother's funeral, and she's a signatory to that particular account, and the transfer was done for the purpose of her using the money to pay her brother's school fees. And so in terms of the substantive request, that she's making, she's urging the court to uh, reject the OSP's confirmation order and rather order a release of the seized sum and also unfreeze the accounts. And so on Wednesday, there will be the legal arguments about, first and foremost, whether the case should be heard earlier than the 18th. And so in the event the court holds that view, then the court would have to decide the day to have that particular hearing. And on that hearing day, it is possible that it could even be the Wednesday if the court grants it. And on that particular hearing, the arguments will be advanced as to whether there's a justifiable basis for the money to remain seized and accounts remain frozen or they should be made available to the former sanitation minister. Away from that, let's bring you some other subjects this morning as the government of Ghana has condemned attacks on Israel by Hamas militants. This fellow's ongoing event in Israel where Hamas militants from the Gaza Strip infiltrated into southern Israel to attack innocent Israeli civilians amid a barrage of rocket attacks from the Gaza Strip. The Foreign Affairs Ministry in a statement issued on Sunday said Ghana unequivocally condemns the attacks and calls on the Hamas leadership to immediately cease the attacks and withdraw its militants from southern Israel. Quote, while well, Ghana affirms its support for Israel's right to exist and defend itself, it calls on the Israeli government to exercise restraint in its response to the Hamas attacks. And quote, it took the opportunity to call on both sides of the Israel-Palestinian conflict to return to the negotiation table. In a related development, the chairperson of the Commission of the African Union, Musa Faki Muhammad, expresses his utmost concern at the outbreak of the current Israeli-Palestinian hostilities, causing grave consequences for the lives of Israel and Palestinian civilians in particular, and for peace in the region in general. The chairperson wishes to recall that denial of the fundamental rights of the Palestinian people, particularly that of an independent and sovereign state is the main cause of the permanent Israeli-Palestinian tension. The chairperson urgently appeals to both parties to put an end to military hostilities and to return without conditions to the negotiating table to implement the principle of two states living side by side to safeguard the interests of the Palestinian and the Israeli people. The chairperson further calls on the international community and the major world powers, in particular to assume their responsibilities to impose peace and guarantee the rights of the two people. To some other subjects this morning, and the Ghana Journalist Association has called on the police to immediately arrest the remaining suspect who invade the studios of UTV, describing the act as barbaric and medieval. The GJA asked the police to expedite prosecution of the perpetrators. The association, however, says it is highly disappointed in a statement issued by the information minister which tried to justify the attack. According to the GJA, the posturing of information minister Kujopo and Kroma is worrying as he avoids a direct condemnation of the incident. The association in a frontal response to the information minister asked him to refrain from imposing a burden on the media to promote national cohesion. Meanwhile, the Ghana Journalist Association has urged media practitioners 
to act professionally at all times in the discharge of their duties. Well, prominent media advocate and executive director of the Media Foundation for West Africa, Dr. Suleiman Abraham has raised significant concerns about the recent attack on UTV on a Saturday night. He questions the moral justification for resorting to violence as a response to media content, emphasizing that there are functional legal avenues available for those dissatisfied with media content. Very, very unpleasant. Very unfortunate and absolutely condemnable. It is also very, very surprising on the part of the owners of the site media group. Their architecture or their arrangements are said that parks can move all the way from the entrance of the building all the way up into the building and that all the way into the studios where the program was being held. I think that is quite extremely surprising that a media organization like that would have such a porous um, arrangement when it comes to safety and security. But of course, that is not to say that what happened was justifiable. It is absolutely untenable for this to happen. But again, for me, it is not surprising if this is coming from persons who are described as tax within the MPP. Because it appears to me that at this stage, we have a government that people are desperate to show their loyalty. And even if that means that they must act in a rather reckless way, they would do that just to get the attention of either the president or, pe or persons in government. Mm. It is good that the Ministry of Information has been switched, and in the statements that we've read, the ministry was part of a complainant in terms of alerting the police to, to act in the way that they did. And that, for me, is very, very encouraging. Of course, you would say that it's an extension of government. That is true. But, I mean, a certain culture has been legend that is breaching all that we are witnessing, which is really rather unfortunate. I don't know if the Despite Media Group is a wing of the MPP. To the extent that people in the MPP would think that the Despite Media Group is supposed to be doing things that amplify the wishes of the government. If they are not happy with the content of the program, they are at liberty to either do a rejoinder or to request for a platform to also share whatever it is that they feel they want to share or to use in the party affiliated media outlet to also champion whatever it is that they would want members of the public to hear. I don't think that there is any rule that says that a media house should pull the line of a government all the time. What is objective in one man's mind may not be objective to the other person. Well, in reminding you that journalism is not a crime, let's see on our screen some attacks on the media over the past couple of years and we recall in July 2023 the aide to the German South uh, MC in the Bono region he stormed the stages of uh, German radio and you see that on your screen at the moment as part of examples of attacks on the media then uh, in July uh, 11 2023 we we'll also see that that's what happened then in May 3 2023 the Dagwan FM presenter was attacked by two people live on air. October 7, 2023, uh, there's a concern about press freedom and that was a known person storming UTV during a live show there. And you see another on uh, January 13 where Radio Ada was attacked by Thax. October 18, 2017, the Kumasi Youth Association, they attacked a regional office of Daily Guide newspaper in Kumasi. Even to previous years, 2017, December 2, Thax from studio of uh, Radio Justice in Tamale, they assaulted a presenter there. February 2023, uh, February 23, 2018, a presenter of A1 Radio that happened in uh, Bolgatanga, Christopher Kevin Asiema, was attacked by uh, police and uh, the journalist was brutalized. So these are just a few of the attacks on uh, media persons, media houses in relation to the content that they churn out. In the meantime, the Information Minister, as you may be aware, uh, Kujopo Nkrumah, says he condemns in no uncertain terms any unauthorized entry into media organizations in protest at media content or interference with media work. This is a comment uh, that the Information Minister made as part of a statement he released condemning the attack on uh, UTV. The right to free expression, he says, 
and the freedom of the media are key pillars to our democracy and must be fiercely protected. Away from that, the Nigerian community in Ghana is reaching out to former President John Ejikumku for seeking his support to resolve the ongoing trade dispute between Ghouta and Nigerian residents in Ghana. The president of the Nigerian community, Dr. Chief Albert Bayer, made this appeal during a recent visit to commiserate with the former president and express condolences for the passing of former First Lady Thierry Zakufo. Ghana have lost a great uh, person because uh, people like uh, Mother Teresa, they are not common. When you see uh, a good wife, it will show in the husband's life. Our interaction with uh, former President Kufo has shown that uh, Mame is a very good wife. It's a gift to the heart. It's a gift to the whole nation of Ghana, not only to our daddy, our father, the president. Because the president, I can say my interaction with him shows me a great lesson. That was when I learned how to be humble the more. In every of our engagement with Daddy, he has shown a great love to Nigerians in general. There is no any time we run to him for his help or some certain issues. We always receive, he receives us with a whole hand and he has been solving the problems for us. Some other subjects this morning and residents of Kisaman in Accra facing severe flooding due to a crumbling uh, drainage system causing loss of life and damage to property. Peter Kawadoto reports on the increasing frustration and calls for action. The Kisaman Soba Down community experiences an ongoing nightmare every time it rains. The Westlands area's inadequate drainage system has led to flooding property destruction and disruption of lives. The state of the bridge leads to severe flooding. They should just clean the water path to reduce the impact. Residents, including Benis Agboglu and Ahmed Dapla, shared distressing experiences during rainy seasons, highlighting the frustration of the people. All our foodstuffs are destroyed. We have nothing to eat. So we are pleading for intervention. Once the collapsed bridge is fixed, our problems are all solved. The continuous rain causes displacement and destruction of vital community infrastructure like inner roads and footbridges. The daily risk for children in the community is crossing this rickety wooden bridge. I came here in 1999. I built a house here. I don't have any flood in that time. But you reach some point, you see that where the water become, become flood, this is the level of the water. Now all the tenants, you can't rent to them again. A community youth leader emphasized the urgency of the situation, stating that residents have exhausted all options. Residents are calling for action from duty bearers using the rallying cry, no bridge, no votes, to demand the necessary repairs and prevent further devastation during rainy seasons. Look at the level of the water sometimes. How can you stay here and work? And always, when we talk, nobody is coming to our aid. So please, we want the government to hear about this so that they can help us in constructing the bridge. The bridge is our problem. Christian Village Bridge. Well, let's bring you some other subjects in international news. This morning, as hundreds of Israelis have been killed in attacks from Gaza since Saturday, the government says it is believed that as many as 100 soldiers and civilians were kidnapped when Palestinian fighters crossed the border and raided communities. Palestinian officials say retaliatory Israeli airstrikes have also, been, have also killed hundreds of people in the Gaza Strip. Thousands are also wounded. The wave of attacks launched by the Hamas militant group on Saturday morning is the biggest escalation in decades between the two sides. Yeah. 
Well, as you may be aware, Selim from the Volta region has just won the 2023 Ghana's Most Beautiful Edition. Here are some sights and sounds. And we are about to wrap it all tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many prize packages you see behind us. Our sponsors are many and we are blessed to have all of them on GMB 2023. Let's quickly run through... Uh, to take home and top choco is also given our ladies a beautiful hampers to say well done now cookie this is where we get into <sighs> the crux of the matter the moment we've all been waiting for napkins with 16 points and nine points Right, so she gets 15,000 Ghana CDs as her cash prize. And that sash, that gives her the bragging rights as Ghana's most beautiful 2023. Well, congratulations to the winner and all the finalists of GMB 2023. That's it for the news on New Day. My name is Noble Cross Viana. There's more news on our website, 3news.com. Please log on for more. New Day continues after this. Good morning.